All right, first time renting the RV, Cruise America, 25 footer. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a full review right now. I'm just picking it up, but we're about to check it out, see all the things we need, what we need to do. So, look around. So, It. I mean, uh, this is pretty much if you were to be dry camping, this is what you would depend on. It's nothing special. This is pretty much the water you would use on your way to your RV site. So all you have to do is stick your garden hose in there. Once it's topped off, it's going to start spilling water out of here. And once more, this is pretty much the water you use uh, before you get to your destination, whether you need to wash your hands, take a quick shower, or use the restroom. Okay. It's pretty much storage. Uh, this right here is a table. So this right here is a table. You can literally take this out and pretty much put it anywhere. Spread tire. And since you guys are doing full hookups, that is going to be your water hose connection right there. Okay. If you guys are here at night, we do have a light switch. So if you are here looking for stuff at night, we can pretty much turn on the light and then we do have outlets as well. All right, cool. I'm going to notate this, uh, this ding right here. This is just another opening to, oh, this is where you landed. 87, oh, wow. yeah, I, I, it was on there earlier and I was driving and it just flew away, but it's a little pain. That's what you said? Yeah, but 87 <laughs> gas is perfectly fine to go ahead and fill up. Okay. I'll let him take you. That, that way he can go with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> he can go, he can stay. <laughs> All right, so one end, so the hose that I just showed you, the white one that I just showed you, that's in the storage. Yeah. Okay. One end is going to hook up here, and then the other end is going to hook up to your water supply, which is a water spigot at the RV site. Okay. So that is your full hookup. So when you have full hookup, you have water and you have electrical. So that hose that I showed you, one end is going to hook up here, the other end to your water spigot. Just like at home, once you go ahead and hook it up and you turn on the water, you instantly have water. All you have to do is turn on your water faucet and water comes out. Okay. This right here is storage for, um, no, actually this is just storage for the hose. So, nothing special. I can literally take that hose out all the way out if I like to, but it's not uh, attached to anything, it's just storage. But this is the hose for the sewer. So this is where the fun happens. So when we're ready to dump, we do have indicators inside the RV letting you know when you're ready to actually dump all your waste. Uh, the way this works when you're ready to dump, we always open up the right one first. This is right here is the cap where you're going to go ahead and attach this hose. So you see how this uh, this cap's attached, locked in? Yeah. Same concept. So once you undo the cap, what we're going to do is we're going to grab that end and we're going to lock it in the same way that the cap's locked in. Okay. So once you lock it in, the remainder of this hose is going to get thrown into the actual dump station, which is just a hole in the ground. We're pretty much ready to open up our valves now. We always open up our uh, black, which is all your toilet waste. Uh, we don't twist or turn, you just pull. Once you go ahead and open that one and that's done, leave it open. We're going to go ahead and open up the grate, which is all your sink and shower water. And what that's going to do is going to clean out whatever was running throughout, through that line first. If you reverse the process and you, you open this one and then you open that one, uh, when you're about to put the hose away, all the nasty stuff that was in that black tank is pretty much just going to ooze out because that's all your waste. It's all your toilet waste. It's all your pee and your poop. Okay. So we always do this one black first. Black first. Right here. Always your right hand and then your left hand. Okay. Left hand is what's going to clean whatever was in that line first. That water. Okay. Yeah, and that water was coming down and then this is what's going to go ahead and clean all that nasty stuff out. Okay. Gotcha. Once you're all done, reverse the process, close the valve, put the hose back in, lock it up. You're pretty much good to go on your uh, dump. This is pretty much your city shoreline. So in order for you to go ahead and get power, there's only three things that the generator actually turns on or when you go ahead and plug into your RV site with the power. The only thing that this generator turns on or this uh, picture this uh, end of a power strip, everything's connected to this. If you don't plug this into either this power source or the power source that's at the RV site, 
the ma major things that pretty much work on this is your AC, your microwave, and all the outlets throughout the uh, unit. Okay. So if this is not plugged in either to here and the generator's on, you're not gonna get any power in, like to the microwave, to the AC, or to the outlet. Okay. If you're at the RV site and this is not plugged into your, pretty much your power source, and once more, you're not gonna get any power. So if we're Okay, good? I got a question. Mm -hmm. So when I'm at the RV site and that's plugged up to my power source, that's giving power, but is it also gonna charge for the road? Would it be charging or how does that work? No, no, so that's the thing, the generator, in order for you, the, the, you get charged $3.50 to use a generator. And that's pretty much what's gonna give you power on board. Say if you were to dry camp and you had no hookups, that's where you're gonna get your power from. Since you're doing full hookups, your power source is coming from your RV site. Okay. So you don't even have to turn on the generator and you won't get charged because the power source is coming from the RV site. Gotcha. All this is, is pretty much the end of a power strip. Everything's connected to this power strip and you're just giving it power. All right. And uh, they charge you to get pretty much to turn on the generator, which is what's going to give you power throughout the whole unit. Uh, when you guys are doing full hookups, you probably only need it for an hour or two on your way over there. Once you get to your destination, and you hook up, you pretty much unlimited power supply and unlimited uh, water as well. Okay. You're not limited to your 50 gallons that the RV gives you for the water and then you're not limited to running up your hours because you do get charged $3.50 to use the generator. Per hour? Yeah, per hour. Okay. So now it's, it's before the before you charge 350, do you have you have so many hours? Or you have no just, hours. Period, okay. Period, so from, there's a little meter up there you guys are currently sitting at 243. Once the meter starts shooting up, 244. 350. Exactly, that's okay. pretty much an hour. It starts clicking over. Okay. But would you guys need it uh, for the way over there? Maybe, depends if you want to go ahead and uh, charge something. If you guys are way too hot back there and you need the AC, you turn on the generator and then- that's Yeah, a few hours isn't bad yeah, throughout exactly. your trip. But if you're pretty much dry camping and that's your power source- It's gonna add up. And that's gonna add up. <laughs> So we're pretty much ready to head inside. If you guys want to go ahead and take a seat. Alright. Alright. Alright, we're pretty much good. Is everything pretty much self-explanatory on here? So this is the bed right here. Obviously a bed in the back. And then a uh, bed in the front. Got it, right. And like I said, we did get the fridge going right now, so it's been on for a few hours. Turn it on. No, I just turned that one. So I barely even turned the floor. Right? So give it a few more hours and then you should be starting to feel a difference. Okay. Once you get to your RV site, the fridge automatically knows that your so the fridge works two ways: propane and electrical. When this is on auto and you hook up with that big shoreline that I showed you, the big connection on the outside, mm -hmm. this fridge automatically knows that you're going from propane to electricity without you even having to touch that dial to close the propane. Okay. So it'll start working on electrical and then whether it's up to you whether you want to go ahead and close your propane, you still got your stove, your furnace, your water heater, if you guys want to go ahead and use those uh, pretty much amenities on the RV. Uh, besides that, any other questions besides this main panel right here, which I'm about to pretty much explain so you can pretty much get uh, it. I'm just yeah. going to go over this one more time. So when it's in auto, it's on, it's running the propane. And when I want to run through the power source, I'm going to click it off. No, no, no. It'll oh. know automatically. All you have to do is plug, plug it, it in. in and it'll click off. Okay. It'll, it'll switch from propane to electrical automatically. And then when I unplug it, it's automatically going to switch It's going to go back to propane. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So this is pretty much the main panel. If you want to go ahead and turn on the generator to either get power to your AC, your outlets, or the microwave, we have to prime it. We press stop. Got 244. So uh, I gave you 245 just in case you're on your now. You're pretty. You're pretty much good. I gave you one free hour. Okay. So this is pretty much, once you turn on the generator, you pretty much have power to your outlets, the microwave, and obviously the AC. All right. So same concept, as soon as you go ahead and plug in via that shoreline on the outside, you don't need this generator, generator anymore. You automatically get power to all these things as soon as you plug in. Okay. Uh, so pretty much liquid propane, 
you're pretty much chopped off. This is the level indicating, but we don't go based off this dial, we go based off the dial that's down there. Battery condition, you do have two batteries. That secondary battery, what it does, it's gonna, it's gonna pretty much turn on your water pump. So whenever you guys need water, you turn on your water pump. This is only before you get to your RV site. You instantly get water. So if you need to use the restroom, we turn on the water pump, we take care of your needs, come back over here, and we turn off the water pump. Okay. Once you get to the RV site and you're hooked up via that hose over there on the end on the outside, there's no need for you to go ahead and use the water pump or the generator because why we're getting electrical coming in from the RV site and we're getting that unlimited water from uh, the RV site as well. That's enough pressure to pressurize the whole unit. So when you're hooked up with that hose on the outside, all you have to do is turn on the faucet, you instantly get water. Got it. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Fresh water. So right now you're pretty much empty. That is the 50 gallon tank that I was telling you about. So the one that's on the outside. Mm -hmm. So whether you want to go ahead and fill it up, it's nothing crazy. It's just your garden hose. Before you take off, I do recommend you at least having uh, one third or two thirds. That way, if you need to use the restroom or wash your hands before you get to your RV site, you at least have some water in the tank to do whatever you got to do before the RV site. Okay. And if I want to use that, I'm just going to click on the fresh on the button. No, no, no. So if you want to use the water, uh, the fresh, is, these are just the levels oh, okay. indicating the levels. So this is empty. This is full liquid propane. You're topped off, but we go based off that now. That secondary uh, battery, you're pretty much at two thirds fresh water, which is that 50 gallon tank outside. You're pretty much at empty. You still have a little bit in there. Your black tank, which is all your toilet waste is pretty much empty as well. Gray, which is all your sink and shower waste is pretty much empty as well. Okay. And if you guys want to go ahead and have the water heater, make sure you have the propane on. You turn on the water heater. It's going to click right here. A few seconds. 15, 20 minutes and we can go ahead and jump in and take a hot shower. Okay. I do not recommend you guys going back to back. Say he takes a shower and you want to go ahead and take a shower right after him. We have to wait at least another 15, 20 minutes and then you can go ahead and jump, take another hot shower. All right. All right. Any other questions? Um... As far as the gears, like if I'm going uphill, do I need to switch anything? That is uh, completely up to you. If you know the vehicle is stuttering, then yeah, I would go ahead and drop it to a lower level. I okay. mean, a lower gear, and that's about it. Uh, I mean, it also depends on how much weight you, you have on this RV. Okay. They're, they're pretty, they have some oomph to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, these these, these Fords, they, they got a little power. Yeah, okay. yeah, they got some power. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. All right, so I don't know if you want to go ahead and give me signatures here outside. It's pretty hot in here. Yeah, it is. I'm like, I'm gonna have to turn the air on already. Yeah. All right, so just make sure you go ahead and bring it back at that level. Okay. If not, then uh, we will charge you $25 per quarter of the tank to bring it back up to that level. Uh, the fridge does work on either propane or the electrical. All right, so we back at the house. We actually starting to pack, put stuff in. We got our snacks, we got our food. Starting to load up. Fridge isn't quite cold yet, but it's getting there. So we're gonna get the ice chest and start putting stuff in our ice chest. Our freezer is full, it's starting to get a little cold, but it's not there yet. He just kind of clicked it on when I picked it up. Um, he said he thought he clicked it on an hour or two before we picked it up, but he didn't. <clears throat> so there's that. All right, so God made a Lysol at the whole place. I understand why, but she sprayed so much, she damn near killed me. <clears throat> but you know, you can't never be too safe. I don't know if they sanitize it enough for us. <sighs> we got our blankets on, our sheets on. Got a shower covered. Like I said, the food is coming along. Uh, my oldest is gonna sleep up here. That's got all his sheets and blankets. All our food and snacks. All right, obviously we're gonna sleep back here. This turns into a converts to a bed too. This is our first time RVing and a lot of people don't show this part. So I want to show this part too. Like you gotta get your RV. You gotta pick up your RV, rent your RV. Unless you're gonna put all your stuff in a car, which is not, our cars ain't big enough. You gotta bring your RV back to your house. 
everything you pack, load it up. Dishes, air fryer, whatever you're gonna use, ice chest, clothes, blankets for the beds, everything's gotta be loaded up. So a lot of people, I've seen videos, I've never seen this part. So you gotta realize how stressful this part is, getting everything in your RV. All our cameras, all our gear, everything. So just remember to pack the night before, pack a couple days before and have everything staged by your garage, in your garage, ready to go. Because once you get that RV there, you gotta load everything up. Now closing out, I just wanted to say to keep an eye on your oil, gas, and propane. Now, and just keep it a condition of your RV, make sure everything is the way you got it. Now we traveled from Nevada, Utah, Arizona, so we drove for a while. Um, the Ford drives really well. Depending on where you rent from, you might get a different year, but it hauled ass. Now, um, as far as the RV sites, I will show a quick, a quick clip of how we did hook up the um, the hoses and hook up the electrical just for the first timers. Like I said, this video is for the first timer, somebody who's never done this, never done it with their family, like really starting from scratch. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this clip and just give you an idea of what the full hookup is about because that's what you want. You're going to pull this one out? No, 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 no. See this plug right here? Mm -hmm. This is the one we pull out right here. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to pull this up, the box up for me. This is our plug in right here. Alright. So now we just gotta hook the hose up. Alright. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, we put the hose back over there. So we have our hose for the water, sewage, and our plug ins. I got our plugins. Those three things. So, first timer, first time doing it. Right now, we just got rid of our sewage. It's so far, so good, successful. <laughs> plugins and our our water. So we're doing pretty good. In this video out, I just wanted to show a couple of the locations we went to from Zion to Monument Valley. Uh, we drove for a long time. Like I said, it drove well. Um, the only thing I would say is to keep your oil, propane, gas level where it's at. Try not to run your generator. Um, if it's really hot, running in a couple hours while you're driving, cooking a quick meal while you're driving, that's not going to add up with 10, 12 bucks. Um, double check and make sure you're booking um, your RV site with full hookups because that's going to save you. You're going to be able to plug in and run your air, cook, do everything without being charged. Um, so, those are my tips and my pointers. I would say the only negatives to this whole thing was gas because um, we're in California. Gas is extremely high. It takes a lot to fill that tank up. <clears throat> it's a big tank, so when it is full, it runs for a while. It lasts you a while, but it's, it's still expensive. So just keep an eye on your gas levels. We all know gas is high right now. That was the negative. Um, the only other negative I can probably say is, um, just, well, not negative. Just make sure to try to see if you can pick your RV up as early as possible. Be prepared, pack everything, have everything ready in advance. Don't be like us. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, that's pretty much it as far as negative. I mean, maybe, um, trying to get into certain locations, um, in Zion going through the tunnel, you know, we had to get a pass. Um, we tried to hike the Canyon over look trail we couldn't park because we had an rv it was not much parking so sometimes those those are a little bit of the negative sometimes the rv is not going to get everywhere you, you can get with a car the positive is camping in the rv site you know only 13 miles outside of zion uh we were the first ones there you know it wasn't many people in the park other people that get in hotels they might be 20 30 miles away if they're not paying a a, a hand and a leg to stay in the park so there's pros and cons to this thing, but definitely more pros than cons. Um, it's an adventure you won't forget with your family, and it's definitely worth it. I would try renting before you look into buying, just to see if it's for you. Um, it might not be our thing. It might be more. We might more be at a camper van, um, more interested in a camper van maybe. It just gives you an idea of what you want to do in the future. So um, that does it for this video. I definitely help, hope I helped anybody that's a new timer, that's a newbie like me. 
um, that just has no idea from the hookups to the generator, anything. Like, I, I didn't go RVing as a kid. This is my first time renting an RV, driving an RV, and even being in an RV. So anybody that's just new to this, that has no idea where to start, where to rent it, do I need a certain license to drive an RV? There's, there's questions a lot of people don't want to ask because they don't want to feel dumb. But if you don't know, you don't know. So that does it for this video, this review. Um, I give it a thumbs up. I mean, like I said, it wasn't perfect, but it definitely was, uh, it, it was more good than bad. And it wasn't horrible or anything. It definitely ran and did the job. Um, that's going to do it for this video. So remember, love life, cherish life. And I'll see you on the next one. I have definitely have a couple more reviews coming. And I have some more um, National Park and hike videos coming. So I'll see you all in the future. Peace.